The We Create Lumos is a compact dual laser engraver that pairs a 3 watt IR module with a 10 watt diode module. It's designed to offer versatility across metals, plastics, organics, and more, while including autofocus, fine adjustment controls, an integrated exhaust fan, and an HD camera for alignment. With the goal of competing directly with the F1, it's on a mission to deliver quality hardware and software tools that improve the user experience for multi-wavelength lasers, and as far as I'm concerned, it's a success. Even if the differences between the Lumos and its predecessors in the market are small, they add up, and that's what we like to see. While I did receive this review unit from We Create for free, I was not paid for a review, positive or otherwise, and this review is based entirely on my own personal testing and opinions. We Create did not have the opportunity to see this or make changes to this review before it was published. In this review, I'll walk you through my personal experience using the Lumos, and I'll touch on everything I think you should know before deciding to make a purchase in order to help you figure out whether or not this machine is for you. While I'm grateful you guys value my opinion, make sure to always do your own due diligence before deciding to make a laser purchase. A few weeks ago, this was an entirely different review, which was marred by the absence of bidirectional scanning. This omission heavily affected usability. Let me just say I'm extremely grateful that's not the review I have to publish, and I'm extremely happy that we create heard the outcry from the laser community and made the changes needed to alter the course of this review. Nonetheless, by the end of our time here, you should have a clear picture of what this machine can and can't do, and whether it's the right fit for your workflow. My Lumos shipped securely, with foam pack protection inside and outside of the machine. This was definitely a pack job that would survive falling off a truck. The laser includes a lens cap, exhaust adapter, and both engraving and cutting beds. Since the machine comes pre-built, setup is straightforward and can be done in just a few minutes. Autofocus and a rear fine-tuning dial make getting started easy, and the cutting bed is a welcome inclusion for anyone planning to use it on wood or acrylic projects. I find it particularly pleasing that the cut bed slots right into the gap left when removing the standard work bed, something that in the first of many comparisons, the X-Tool F1 doesn't do. All things considered, I think the box comes pretty well stocked with everything you need to start using it right away, and I wouldn't worry too much about this machine in transit, which is what we like to see. When it comes to build quality, the We Create Lumos gives a solid first impression. When using the Lumos, you get a nice 116 by 116 millimeter work area, and you'll see top speeds of around 4,000 millimeters a second, thanks to the scan head in this unit. At 7 kilograms even, or about 15 pounds, you'll have no problem hoisting up this bad boy for a trip out and about, if that's what you plan on doing with it. The metal chassis is rock solid for its size, and it feels rigid and stable when you're making adjustments. The fume extraction system also deserves a mention. While it only serves to keep smoke and debris from accumulating in the work area, it works quite well when paired with external filtration or vented exhaust. Looking at the base module, the interior has a pin array for connecting directly to the laser head, reinforced by internal studs and a mounting screw that keeps the whole module locked firmly in place. On the right hand side, You'll find two accessory ports, a 4-pin aux connector, and a 6-pin rotary connector. The side also houses the focus controls, both with a manual focus by wire dial and a one-touch autofocus button for convenience. Around back, the connections are straightforward. A USB-B printer style port for data, and a standard barrel power jack. On the left hand side, the design keeps things simple with a single power switch. The laser module itself also carries a practical set of ports and features. On the rear, it offers a USB-C port, jack for power, and a small USB fan connector. These ports exist if you're using the laser module separately from the base. It requires a special shield cone attachment to use effectively, and I wasn't sent that, so we won't be talking about it in today's review. Underneath, you'll find some hardware to assist you while working. Bright illumination LEDs, an HD camera for software alignment and preview, the focus guide laser, a protective lens cap, and the 110mm lens. The system may be bright purple, but it seems built well where it counts. I don't have any issues with the placement of the controls, and I'm actually pretty fond of the overall setup here. 
The Lumos packs two excellent laser modules, a 3 watt IR alongside a 10 watt blue diode module. Generally, you'll want to use your IR for marking metals, whereas the diode is going to do better with organics like leather, wood, and opaque acrylics, among other things. I'll note both of these laser modules are definitely capable of color marking. The 455 nanometer diode is safer to experiment with, as the risk of ablating is far lower than with the IR, and produces muted but reliable colors. The IR module produces a much more vibrant palette, but can only be used for this purpose when defocused. The rate of ablation when using the autofocus is simply too high, and the lack of control over frequency or pulse width make in-focus color marking virtually impossible. The 3 watt IR source also provides a power edge over comparable 2 watt models. It may only be a watt difference, but it's 50% more power downrange, which is noticeably more effective for ablation and more serious markings. You won't be doing any deep engraving or cutting with the IR module, but its effect on raw materials is impressive. The Lumos successfully engraved on wood, aluminum, steel, two-ply acrylic, slate. I'm certain the list of compatible materials doesn't end there. Between the IR and the blue modules, you have a massive array of substrates you can target with this machine. Did I mention cutting is a thing? It was able to cut 3mm wood after a bit of tuning with focus and produce desirable results. While this isn't a cutting machine, you can certainly get away with it here and there on thinner materials. I've thought long and hard about how to approach the performance section of this review now that WeCreate has published the bi-directional scanning update for the Lumos. I'm going to update the performance score accordingly to an 8, but I'm also going to share with you why the original score was a 4 in the hopes that WeCreate, along with any and all of their competitors, sees this and plans accordingly. This is an issue that affected not only the WeCreate Lumos, but still plagues their 20 watt and 40 watt vision lasers, both of which I really enjoyed unboxing and testing. They're built so well and do so many clever things, and this one boulder in the road leaves me at an impasse with these reviews. It's a shame. That is to say, the push for unidirectional scanning on the Lumos was a fucking disaster. When the Lumos launched, it hailed its new technology surrounding its unidirectional scanning a revolutionary breakthrough in speed, beating other lasers in its class. Whether or not this is true depends on your point of view. It may or may not have been faster than other lasers when comparing unidirectional scanning directly, but in what world would that be the reasonable assumption? The campaign dismissed bidirectional scanning and representatives informed me it simply wasn't needed and the Lumos remained competitive in performance without it. It took five minutes with this machine to realize that, that simply wasn't the case. Its performance was critically limited by the absence of bidirectional scanning. Despite marketing claims in every head-to-head -head test we performed with the Xtool F1 running bidirectional, the Lumos unidirectional scan was slower, sometimes more than twice as slow. The longer the job, the worse the performance gap. I have struggled to imagine what math would result in a faster runtime on a unidirectional scan over a comparable bidirectional scan. We tested again and again, and every time we landed on the same result. Competing products, when issued identical settings, are simply far faster at producing producing equal quality or better work than the Lumos. Today, of course, the situation couldn't be more different. We create ended up doing a complete 180, and news quickly spread through the laser community. The funny thing is, a firmware update was never published. The only change was made to the WeCreate Make It software, which enabled a toggle for uni and bidirectional scanning. Weird, right? You would think if this machine needed to somehow fundamentally change in order to accommodate this feature request, that the firmware would need to be updated to change how the laser functions. Apparently not. Don't take this as fact, but what this says to me is that it was a relatively mild affair to enable bidirectional scanning, and we could have had it long ago without much of a fuss. It makes me wonder why we ended up here in the first place. The whole thing is just strange. At any rate, the Lumos now performs on par or better with the likes of the F1. Head-to-head -head bidirectional scan tests often showed the Lumos matching or beating run times on jobs where previously it had crawled light years behind the competition. We had concerns about the cost of this quick decision to reverse course so suddenly, and so we spent quite a long time pressing the Lumos to see if shortcuts were taken to enable this feature. We found 
that since the update and compared to unidirectional scanning results, there was no discernible drop in quality, and the results have been as clean as we've come to expect from specialty multi-wavelength machines like these. While we're talking quality, you can see that the We Create Lumos just gets the advantage here on detail. Just, I mean, barely. It's really, really a small difference. But if you take a look at how the hatch forms are shaped and disregard the outline, that contour mark, obviously that makes the text much easier to see. But if we focus on just the hatch blobs, I think you'll see that the Lumos is just a little bit better at resolving details that the Xtool F1 is missing out on. So this was interesting to see, and I'm glad to see it. The major advantage you're sure to enjoy is with metal ablation, where the higher 3 watt IR output wattage allows faster material ablation. In testing, the Lumos was capable of getting darker marks faster than other lasers in its class. While this could be great for someone looking to do primarily metalwork, the fact is, for the same price or just a little more, you could purchase a much higher wattage dedicated fiber, something in the 10 to 20 watt range, that would blow this machine away with its substantially improved capabilities. Now, none of this means the Lumos doesn't have a market. On the contrary, this laser has the makings of a high performance machine especially for beginners, and offers a highly mobile and compact platform with a massive set of materials within its range. Its adaptability is its strength and its weakness, and that's fine. Sometimes you have to make compromises to gain flexibility, and I'm on board with that. The included We Create Make It software is functional, with presets, alignment tools, and material tester bays. Little touches that make it easy to use are present, like the camera retaking a photo of the workspace when autofocus is activated. Large Usually, we create make it feels like a stripped down clone of XCS or the newer Xtool Studio. So, if you're used to using XCS, you'd feel pretty comfortable here, minus some of its newer features. If you know me, you know Lightburn compatibility is big for me as far as usability goes. Well, there's good news and bad news. The good news is we create claims the machine is Lightburn compatible. Yay. The bad news is that when I started writing this review, the device profile was nowhere to be found on their website. I made attempts to add the device on my own, but struck out. We reached out to WeCreate, and they promptly responded by letting us know the device profile would be out within the week. In the meantime, they sent us a test profile, which they recommended we use Lightburn version 1.6 or earlier. Yikes. Since then, the device profile has been added to their website, and this one is labeled V1.5. I'm not sure if that's the revision of the profile or the recommended Lightburn version. There aren't any instructions or details about how to use the profile, or its included macros, or recommendations on how to set up the machine. On top of all this, with the recent release of Lightburn 2.0 and its patches, I'm concerned a large number of users will have upgraded past whatever version does end up working with this device profile. I hope they get to fixing this up soon. I have a lot of concerns and a lot of questions. Can you really claim your machine is Lightburn compatible when it requires a version of the software that's years old that a large chunk of the user base is already updated out of? Will it ever work with newer versions of Lightburn? How exactly are you even supposed to use the profile and what do their version numbers mean? We don't know. We've never gotten it working. I can't even find a video of someone else on YouTube using this equipment with Lightburn. I suppose if there's a change, we can update the review down the road, but so far my opinion is that this equipment is not passing as Lightburn compatible, and I'd need to see some substantial improvements here before agreeing it was. The average user is just not going to mess with things to this level to find the answers to these questions, and I can't say I blame them. It's been frustrating. The lack of what I consider Lightburn compatibility certainly casts a shadow on what otherwise is a solid set of software and workflow features. Luckily, we create make it is tolerable, even if it's not how I'd prefer to use this machine, and I'm looking forward to seeing more in terms of Lightburn support from them down the road. As of writing, the Lumos retails for around $1,249 for the base unit, competing directly with the Xtool F1, which is currently selling for $1,269. It offers a more powerful IR source, HD camera, autofocus, and other luxuries. And you can get a pizza with that and spend what you would spend on a comparable F1 kit. Now that the dramatic performance penalty from 
forced unidirectional scanning no longer completely undermines its value proposition, I find myself excited to recommend it to those in the market for this specific type of laser. For flexible workflows where time and detail matter, especially those where there's a clear demand for IR performance, the Lumos finally makes sense and deserves your attention. The price is right for the hardware you're getting, and so the value proposition is solid and makes sense to me. The WeCreate Lumos is thoughtfully designed, well packaged, and includes features that check a lot of boxes. Dual laser versatility, accessory support, autofocus, HD camera, and an impressively compact footprint. Its 3 watt IR module also offers genuine power advantages for ablation and certain color work. At the end of the day, the lack of bi directional scanning was a deal breaker for me. In testing, the Lumos was consistently outpaced by the X-Tool F1, the latter sometimes being twice as fast. Despite the drawbacks that still exist, the Lumos is a great product now, and frankly, WeCreate deserves some props for getting it there. I want it to be super clear that WeCreate saved their product by addressing the bi-directional scanning issue. Making this simple change took this machine from near-perfect yet unusable to something I really love and can wholeheartedly recend, and that's why I think this machine earned it's 8.3 out of 10. It's a great laser that has room to be better, but I still love it. Writing this review was a confusing endeavor and an emotional roller coaster. I hope that WeCreate can come back to the table and consider lifting the restriction they've put on bi-directional scanning for their awesome vision machines as well. Then I'd finally be comfortable reviewing them for what they are instead of what they could have been. Finally, I'd really, really like to see better light burn support. I know these machines are capable of it. It's just going to require some effort from the team behind these great machines. Hopefully things change in the future and we'll keep you updated if we hear anything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.